Chinook winds. Next we can explore Chinook winds. First we need to understand that Chinook winds are prevailing westerly winds, meaning they almost always have the same direction, from west to east. Another key feature of these winds is that they require the presence of mountains to exist. When moist air approaches the windward side of a mountain range, they begin to climb the mountains, gaining altitude and becoming colder. The moisture in the air condenses and forms clouds, which rains on the windward side of the mountain. This type of rainfall is known as relief rainfall. This is because relief is the term used to describe the difference in height between two points. And this type of rainfall occurs exclusively due to a sudden increase in elevation between two points. As the air flows down the leeward side of the mountain, the air warms and the clouds begin to dissipate, creating a dry climate with very little rainfall. This area of dry climate on the leeward side is known as rain shadow, since like shadows occur when light is intercepted by an object, this pocket of dry climate is created by mountains intercepting rain and creating a shadow of dry climate. This is why the windward side of a mountain range will be green and wet, and the leeward side will be brown and dry. You can see examples of this along the South Island High Country of New Zealand, the Himalayan mountain ranges of Nepal, the Ankaratra Mountains of Madagascar, and the Sierra Nevada Mountains of the United States. But now that we understand all our required background knowledge, we can focus in on Chinook winds. Simply put, as the air descends down the leeward side of the mountain ranges, it warms and becomes dry. This warm, dry, descending air is what's known as Chinook winds. These winds can melt a foot of snow in one day and, in the absence of snow, can dry up vegetation. One harsh impact of Chinook winds is that rain-shadowed areas that are already deprived of rain and thus dry will have these dry conditions exaggerated by the warm, drying Chinook winds that flow down the leeward side of the mountain. Now what's cool about Chinook winds is that they create a very unique cloud formation known as Chinook arches. These winds are part of the mountain wave family and make very rare and beautiful clouds seen here. Let's break down how they form. Imagine I have a chain and give it a sudden upwards flick. The resulting flick creates a series of wave-like shapes moving up and down along the chain. We can see how after the initial arch, the wave pan continues some areas moving downwards and other areas moving upwards. But significantly, the arches get weaker as you move further away from the source of the original upwards flick. Now, instead of a chain, imagine a stream of wind. Once it encounters a mighty mountain, it gets flicked up suddenly by the mountain on the windward side, creating relief rainfall. As it goes down on the leeward side, the clouds disappear and creates rain shadow. Now remember, the wind rising and gaining altitude is what causes the moisture in the air to condense and form clouds. So after the initial arch over the mountain, as with our chain example, the wave pattern continues, going up and regaining moisture and creating clouds, then down, lowering in altitude and dissipating the clouds, then up creating clouds, then down dissipating them, and so on. You'll also notice them becoming weaker as they develop away from the mountain. You can see this pattern in time-lapse videos of Chinook arches. Here is where the wind goes up, forming clouds. Here is where it goes down, dissipating them. And here is where they go up again. It can also be seen here, up and clouds, down and no clouds, and then up and clouds again. And here, in the bold Eagle Valley of central Pennsylvania. Up and clouds, down and no clouds, then up and clouds again. One unique characteristic of Chinook arches are there are often sudden and sharp divides between clear sky and clouds. Now, what's important for our pilot is that this wave pattern creates rotors, giant gyrating pockets of cycling air which creates turbulence. Let's explore this by highlighting a pocket of air here. As the wind flow goes down the leeward side of a mountain, it creates rotors that rotate clockwise. Then, going up, creates rotors moving counterclockwise and as it goes back down, creates rotors moving clockwise again. So if you're flying by a mountain, you can experience turbulence pulling you in one direction one moment, and quickly experience turbulence pulling you in the opposite direction moments later. Additionally, some of this wind stream will actually flow around the mountain, creating turbulence once you pass the mountain entirely. 
So don't be fooled into thinking escaping the mountains while flying will free you from their turbulence. You'll need to prepare for turbulence moving around the mountains too. And that's Chinook winds. Fawn winds. Now what are fawn winds? Before I explain that, let's talk about pants. Or underpants depending on where you're from. If you grew up in Australia like me, these are your pants. And these are your underpants. If you grew up in the United Kingdom like my wife, these are your trousers. And these are your pants. Same thing, but depending on where you're from, they have a different name. This same practice is observed with the leeward drying winds flowing down a mountain. We've already discussed how in North America they're called Chinook winds. However, if you're in the European Alps, they're called Fon winds. If you're in Central Asia, they're called Afghanet winds. If you're in the Andes of South America, they're called Polosh winds. And if you're in Southern California, they're called Santa Ann winds. So Fon winds are Chinook winds, but the mountains causing them are the European Alps. And that's Fon winds.